On the show today, Liberty basketball goes on an historic postseason run, and we tell you what's driving LU softball's strong season. Plus, when a medical emergency struck a pickup basketball game, see how One Flames coach and others took action. That's all ahead on this edition of Game On. up welcome into america's favorite pastime this is game on as always he's rhett mcgibbon i'm matt warner and we want to be the first or i guess the last depending yeah. on when you're watching this show to wish you all a very happy easter yeah absolutely nothing like spending time with family on this special holiday absolutely. but not for liberty basketball they weren't hunting eggs this week rather they're hunting a cit tournament title yeah let's get you caught up on all that beginning with the cit quarterfinals the flames hosting central michigan the Chippewas, yeah. right? A team that had scored over 90 points in each of their two previous CIT games. But in this contest, it would not be the Chippewas. It would be Liberty showcasing a high level of offensive execution. How about the senior Ryan Kimright? Flat out feeling it in this one. The Flames' three-point king added to his career record, made seven of 10 from downtown as he led all scores with 21. Not far behind him was Scotty James. His points came a bit more emphatically as he rocked the rim with the trio of thunderous dunks. James was finished with 20 points, nine rebounds. And who was facilitating on this day, you might be asking? Well, that would be Lavelle Cavill, dished out a career-high 13 assists. That, in addition to the Flames' usual stingy pack line defense, led to a runaway 84-71 win, thus advancing Liberty to the CIT semifinals for the first time in program history. Their opponent for this game would be University of Illinois, Chicago. They're also called the Flames, Double believe Flames. it or not. Their mascot is Sparky as well. Anyways, let's get down to the action here. Liberty would jump out of the gates in a hurry, leading 12 to five at the first media timeout, while the defense would be nasty as usual, creating three turnovers. LU would then proceed to go on a dry spell heading into the half. This would allow UIC to jump out in front 28-24 at the break. Second half, Lavelle Cabell would put the Flames on his back and basically one leg as well. He would score five straight points to get Liberty back to within five, but UIC would then go on a 14-0 run over a five-minute span that would give them a 19-point lead. Liberty would eventually fall 67-51, ending their season with a 22-15 record, their second 20-plus win season in a row. Coach McKay spoke about his Flames character after the game. So grateful and appreciative that Myself and our coaches got the privilege of coaching this group. They were they were phenomenal to coach. Uh, not perfect, none of us are, but you want to talk about a group that is committed to liberty and representing our program, their families, and our institution. That group in that locker room is that and more. Well, Liberty Baseball has been battling more than just Big South opponents. They've also been battling the weather. While the Flames don't exactly have a winning record against the Elements, what with a couple of recent cancellations and all, they have done a fine job when playing against conference foes. This past weekend, Liberty hosted UNC Asheville. The Flames would take the first game 8-1, drop the second, and then win the third 19-8. Real pitcher's duel in that last one. Their success came in part thanks to shortstop Cam Locklear. The sophomore had five RBIs in the series. Trey Todd would also chip in with a home run, four RBIs, and four walks in the three games. He's now tied for first in the nation in walks, by wow. the way. The Flames is a team now top 10 in the nation in walks. They get it done as far as the uh, batting eye goes. Having received a grand total of 30 walks in that three game set. How incredible is that? With the win, the Flames now move on to a four and two record in conference play. They weren't done though this past week. They would follow up that series victory with an impressive road win at Virginia Tech. The Flames and Hokies would need extra innings to decide it as freshman Logan Matthew delivered the big hit and RBI single in the 10th to give the Flames the 4-3 victory. Garrett Price got the win in relief throwing four and two-thirds innings of scoreless baseball as Liberty now improves to 14-9 on the season. Well, just like the baseball team, Liberty softball has enjoyed their fair share of success this season and are looking for more. But how does a team that competes at a high level continue to improve and get better? Their motto, set your sights, has every individual striving for perfection so the team can reach their ultimate goal. Every year when we come in, we have something different that we're focused on. Just like a, a theme that we all can rally behind. Something that we want to be focused on for that entire year. 
After the 2017 season, we kind of got to a point in our program after four years where we were um, accomplishing accolades and, and breaking records. And so you, you leave a season like that as a coach and you think, okay, where do we go from here? We're very ambitious and very talented and we never think enough is enough, so we want to be driven. This thing is more focused on us as a whole and you know we all have to do our part in order to achieve what the goal for that week is. Every week we set our sights on something different. So for example, um, one week we'll be set on accountability. Um, like last week we were set on Bring your own guts, you know, and what that means to us and what that would mean to us on the field. This week we're, get, we're set on getting 1% better every day that we come in, doing all we can just to get that 1% better, move on to the next day. I think the theme this year has changed us in knowing that we are so much better than we think and knowing that we have goals to reach and that we have reached so many last year that we know we're a better team and that we even want to break the records that we set last year. Breaking records is a big goal. And big goals can come with a lot of pressure. But this team isn't letting the pressure turn into stress. This year, we're really set on using pressure as being positive and knowing that in the games, we have pressure situations and we need to learn to overcome them instead of getting bogged down with the stress. I think not letting the stress come in is really important. Coach Cass always tells us this, that pressure is good and stress is not. And I definitely think that's a really big factor. Not letting the stress in isn't always easy, but even when it does slip in, kind of trying to transform that into pressure, um, it helps you perform. I mean, there is pressure to come back in and, and do what we did before, but to be honest, our insight is not to win the NISC again. Our insight right now is to win a Big South Championship. Thinking about all the pressure, like as it's getting down to playing time, something that we're hoping that people just really buy into is that pressure is your greatest competitive ally. You know, so it doesn't matter if you're, you know, the pressure for competing for a spot or pressure when you're on the field, if you learn to embrace that and to really use it to your advantage on the field, like that's when you're going to become great. The old saying, there's no I in team, is especially true for this Liberty softball program. They win together, they lose together, and they keep each other accountable every step of the way we were kind of asking them questions and I said, you know, as a coaching staff, do you want us to hold you accountable in a game? And they said, no. Um, and it shocked me a little bit, you know, because as a coach, you're like, well, that's my job. How do I not, you know, how do I not coach you in that way? And um, Tori Zavani is a senior this year. She said, we know. Uh, we know when we're falling short. We know when we're not executing. And uh, it, it was amazing to me that, you know, that they can hold themselves accountable, that they're capable of essentially coaching themselves. And I think that that all goes back to training them. I think uh, as a coaching staff, the, the work that you plan for them and the, the atmosphere that you train them in on a day to day will, will produce that for you so that when it comes game day, they're able to coach themselves and hold themselves accountable. They don't, you know, they don't really need you in, in that arena, which is a good thing. It's just a lot easier to come in with such a simple mindset rather than Focusing on 1,500 things in a you know in a practice at once, just thinking about okay, I'm going to set myself on one thing in my swing today, or I'm going to set myself on one thing when I'm on defense. Every day, I'm just coming in and I'm just going to work on this one thing, and I'm going to be set on that 100%. I'm going to give all I have in that one area until it's perfect, and then I can move on to something better. At the end of the season, there's a much bigger lesson to take home than pitching a perfect game or breaking a home run record. It's about a group of girls coming together and maximizing their God-given potential. I pray that when people watch us play, win or lose, they're in awe. Just how free that our kids are, how much fun they have, how much joy they get out of being on that field with, you know, the highest level of softball and, you know, Liberty Athletics giving us the opportunity to do that and travel anywhere and play anyone. Um, my hope for them and set your sights is that they absolutely go for it with with no reservations and they never look back. And that this season is, is a season in their lives where every challenging thing, whether it's marriage or children um, or sickness, that they will remember Liberty Softball and set your sights and say, I can. That's what I hope set your sights ultimately accomplishes for them is, is down the road in their lives that, that they remember that. I can, I shall, I will.
Thanks to Sam Farnsworth for producing that story. Well, it's been a red-hot start to the conference season for the Liberty men's tennis team as they're unbeaten thus far in Big South play. So we decided to send our own Bobby Bowling to the courts to learn more about what has the Flames playing so well thus far. Well, guys, three and a half months ago, the Liberty men's tennis team was picked sixth in the preseason poll. But after a 4-0 start, the team is surpassing those expectations. And our guys have been bringing it, bringing the energy, the focus and practice. So that's been showing up in our matches. And uh, they're, they're a group that enjoys being around each other. Um, season's pretty long, but we, we've really enjoyed our trips together. And uh, our guys push each other really hard. So I think it's just the coaches have, uh, you know, made a culture of hard work and we enjoy working hard under him. We really, you know, he's inspired us to really, really want to win and, and take the Big South Championship this year. With the new attitude first year head coach Derek Schwant is instilling, the Flames are off for their best conference start they've had in program history. I just think he has a lot of experience with uh, other big scores and I think he can take us to that next level. And he, he has a low key intensity about him and, and just makes us really want to work hard. It's been awesome. Everyone at Liberty has been super supportive and um, it's always a learning process. You got to continue to get better as a player and as a coach, you got to continue to learn. So uh, I've got some great people around me. Beck and Egan have been killing it. Um, so we're just excited about the, the rest of the way, the conference season. Flames look to continue their success by staying committed to the task at hand. At this point, we just need to get more and more disciplined and, and get excited about our fundamentals because our guys are physically fit. Uh, they know their game style. They know their identity on the court. We have to uh, be more disciplined than the other team and make, make better decisions under pressure and have better fundamentals. I mean, we've got two really tough teams coming up, Winthrop and Presby, I think. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of good players. Um, we've got some good ranked players. I think the Big South's getting, getting stronger. Um, but I, th I think we're looking good. We're putting in the hard work, so that's all we can do and just, just hope we can translate into a match and play our best tennis on the day. Although they're off to a great start, the Flames know that they have a tough road ahead, including their next match, April 6th, against the defending Big South champions, Presbyterian. For Game On, I'm Bobby Bolig. Well, Lady Flames tennis taking a little road trip down south this past weekend. First stop would be against Charleston Southern. This would be a historic day for LU. Their 6-1 victory over the Buccaneers would be their first win at CSU in program history. Flames will get a solid performance from junior Ashley Bongart taking the number one singles match 6-3-6-0. Then the Flames would reel in the Presbyterian Blue Hose on Sunday 6-1, improving their conference record to a perfect 3-0. Well, coming up when a pickup basketball game turned into an emergency, see how Liberty basketball coach Richie McKay and others responded. Plus, Rhett names his top athletes of the week in a brand new warm, hot, and fuego. That's when Game On returns.
Welcome back to the show. Well, in life, just like in sports, it's important to be prepared. You never know when you're going to be thrust into a big moment, and you'll have to rely on your preparation to help you come through in the clutch. Will you be ready? Will the situation be too big for you? That was the question that faced Liberty basketball coach Richie McKay and others when a medical emergency put them to the test. Ah, the pickup basketball game, a place to relive the joys of youth and bond with longtime friends. This particular game has become a tradition. Filled with many former Liberty stars and alums, they've been meeting rain or shine for basketball and brotherhood for the last 20 years. Maxie Wilkerson is one of the earliest members. We started at LCA back in the 1980s. And uh, for some reason, we just kept it up over the years. And, uh, you know, I was 57 years old this year. Max and I have probably been playing at least 22, 23 years together. And I uh, really became friends over the last probably 15 years. These guys, including Liberty basketball coach Richie McKay, are about to learn that not only does basketball bring people together, but unfortunately, so does tragedy. It was a typical Sunday night. We're hoping uh, Maxie was on fire, uh, as Maxie can get. He didn't miss a shot. He was hitting everything, you know, and we're, you know, we're like, man, what's up, Maxie, you're hitting everything. And we were on the same team together that night, and um, we'd played, uh, played our games, and Maxie typically would sit out after the second or third game just to readjust knee braces, kind of just take that break, um, knew that that's what he could run, and then he would get back out, play a couple more games, and that was kind of his night. And we were going up and down, and uh, one of the guys said, hey, help, help. We are on the opposite side of the court, and we just hear him yelling, you know, at Maxie, Maxie, Maxie. And we just stopped. And you just see Maxie kind of tilted over on the bleacher and fairly unresponsive. That was it. That was the start of, you know, the next what seemed like forever. As we ran over to see what was happening with Maxi, realizing that there was there was nothing left there, he was just non-responsive, starting to turn color. Um, really, was just a situation where we started to take quick action. Instinct took over, and uh, we we got him on his back and uh, it laid him down and and started CPR and chest compressions. And so I picked up my phone. Started calling 911. I ran to the AED, which was right across the other side of the gym. As I'm running back, I remember by that point, they'd already gotten me what was happening, what was going through the situation. Um, I remember handing the phone off to somebody else, unzipping the AED. Um, and by that point, Richie had already started some compressions. Um, Steve was checking his airways. And so as I kind of came through, set the AED down, we were hooking him up. Um, at that point, Richie kind of jumped off and I jumped in. What I remember most, honestly, is I, I thought we lost him. I mean, he was, yeah. He responded initially and then flatlined and responded really briefly. And then the paramedics got there and they did the, the big machine, the, the big daddy, and they loaded him up in the back of the ambulance. And he was, he was there for 20 minutes because what we had heard is they're not going to move him until he they had they had some vitals and we we huddled up and prayed because we we thought it was over. Maxie's life would hang in the balance. Miraculously, the EMTs had only been two blocks away when they got the call. The quick acting of his friends had given him the time he needed. Maxie had beaten the odds. Less than 5% of people live that have actual cardiac arrest. I mean, that's a scary number. Needless to say, when we got calls the next day or two, incredible joy and a sense of relief and more than anything, the affirmation that we serve a miraculous God. I mean, if you think about it, Basically, I'm not breathing. I have no pulse. They wrote on my report that, you know, basically I was dead. I was, you know, they wrote death on the thing when they called them. I was a code zero. 
you know, to get the phone call from, from Jimmy or a text, whatever it was, that said, hey, Maxie's, you know, had this done, they've replaced this. You know, that was, I was like, are you kidding me? I can't believe it, you know? And when you get there to see him upright and sitting up in less than 12 hours from him dead on the floor, I mean, really was just dead on the floor. And People say the word lucky. There's no such thing as luck. It does not exist. You know, there is a purpose and there is a path, but divine intervention was definitely in play that night. That intervention came in part due to the fact that two of the friends that rushed to help Maxie that night had just recently received CPR training. We got an email about taking a CPR class and we had a similar one at Virginia and I thought it was mandatory, so I thought I had to. We practiced on the dummies and watched the videos and we did all that and I thought then, just like I thought the first time I did it, uh, great to have, but probably won't ever need it. Well, fast forward about 10, 10 days, two weeks, and there I was. And, you know, if I could encourage anyone watching, you just never know. And it was, it was such a blessing to have the confidence to start doing chest compressions and having the rhythm and the count and seeing Steve Perry do the, he started doing the mouth to mouth. And, uh, Steve Bowman grabbed the, the, the AD and, and we patched him up and we cleared him and checked the, checked the scene, called 911. I mean, it was, it was really for some unprofessionals, it was really well organized. Yeah, I mean, I think that was the biggest thing, having you know, two guys fresh off of CPR training with the AED training. You sit in those training classes, you never know who you're going to be saving or if you are even going to save somebody. You know? But then to have your you know, good friend right there on the floor needing that training, it just kicks in. You don't think about it. You're not like, okay, what was I supposed to do next? It just happens, you know? And so God was definitely, you know, had a plan for Maxie after this. Look, when he came back to the gym about two weeks later, you know how you think as a Christian, man, if I was only around when Jesus was alive, if I just had access to what the disciples had access to, I would never, ever doubt it. It was one of those moments, like, he was, man, he was done. I even called my wife and said, I think, I think one of our guys just died. And to see him walking in there and smiling, it was like, really, would you ever not trust God in his sovereignty again? And yeah, so it was, it was, a, it was neat to be a part of. Just a great example of why it's so important to be prepared and in this case, be CPR certified. If you would like more information on how and where you can become certified, it's really simple. Just head to redcross.org for info on classes in your area. Welcome in or back, hey, Rhett McGiven thanks. now. Well, come on yeah, in here. Thanks. Warm, hot, and fuego, part of the show where you name the top athletes of the week here at Liberty. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get no. right to it. Warm, warm, lead us off. Lucas Tophoven. Is that right? Yeah, German guy in the men's lacrosse team here. And he actually, pretty cool little recognition. He okay. was named to the German roster for the upcoming World Championship in lacrosse. That? Yeah, actually kind of funny. Country, Set me yeah. down memory lane a little bit. On my honeymoon, I went to Germany and then I got lost. It was late it's at the night. Land of love. And I was, <laughs> yeah, I was just driving for like 100 miles literally. Wow. Didn't know where I was going. And luckily I stopped at a little convenience store and they helped me out. But, well, uh, I think Lucas yeah. knows right where he's headed. Yeah, exactly. And he is going to do a great job. Yes. Thanks for getting me back on track there. <laughs> you know, he's a sophomore on a really good Liberty team. They just knocked off the number three team in the nation. So this is a group that is heading the right way. And he is in development for yeah. this team. You know, he gets some playing time here and there, but a guy that I think is going to be a solid piece in the future. All right, from yeah. warm now, we transition to hot. Yeah, Brianna McCaffrey here. We're sticking with lacrosse. You pick her every week, right? It seems like You it. have those athletes, it seems like, throughout the season that you can yeah. pick every single week, and she's one of them. Yeah, it was, you know, she's been three-time defensive player of the week so far this season. I was like, I don't want to pick her yet. I don't want to pick her yet. Finally, I was like, <laughs> I have to. And get this, you know, you hear defensive player of the week, but this young lady, 10 turnovers, nine ground balls, but she also had seven goals so she does during that span. Yeah, so against ASU in San Diego State, she was just rolling in. It's so much fun to watch her play. She's got a lot of, like, she's just tenac tenacity. Tenacity? Yeah, that's, that's what you're going to say, for? tenacious. Yes. That's what it was, but, you know, good for her. And she's actually right now fifth nationally in turnovers per game. She forces wow. that many turnovers, so yeah. good job for her. Yeah. And they just beat William & Mary, so the lacrosse team They're on rolling. a roll right now. They yeah. are rolling right now. Fun. Congrats to them. All right, finally, Rhett, in fuego. Yes. Who you got? We got a team here. It's going to be the golf team, and they are out in Oregon here recently yeah. at the Duck Invitational and tied for first 
with Oregon, with the Ducks. So, yeah. you know, they're Oregon, number, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, whatever. Tomato, tomato. Whatever, yeah. yeah, Oregon Trail, you know, whatever you want to say here. <laughs> We're on the right path, though. That's a good yes. thing. You know, they're number 56 right now, Liberty, and then Oregon yes. is uh, number 30 <laughs> here. So the fact that they did that yeah. is great. Isaiah Logue finished one under. He was tied for fifth. And then Demorat, Mickey Demorat, he was two over and he was tied for 12th. So, you know, had some great individual show. performances. Great for them. And then throughout the year, you know, they were third at North Florida. They were third at Seabest. So it's been a, a, a stellar, really, season yeah. for them. And they've got one more to go before Big South play. Yeah, great job yeah. by that crew. A program that maybe doesn't get the recognition right, it deserves totally. nationally, right? Yeah. You don't get the recognition yeah, yeah, you deserve. You. Trust me. All right, still to come, which game on personality has risen to the top of our NCAA tournament bracket contest? I'll give you a hint. My favorite anchor. Stick with us. More game on after this. You might have heard some things about Liberty University, like how we're just a little Christian school in the middle of nowhere, and there's nothing to do here. I mean, come on. You know us. Boring. Boring? Yeah. They say we don't work as hard, think as hard, try as hard. I object. The truth is, well, we might surprise you. Hey there, friends. Welcome back. You know, we told you last week about our Game On NCAA Bracket Challenge Contest, whatever yeah. you want to call it. I didn't really want to bring it up again, but Matt has good reason. To. Well, sure. I mean, like most people, our brackets crashed, burned, yeah, in yes. the dumpster. But you look at the scoreboard, yeah. and there is reason to be happy, at least for me, because I ended up winning of the three of us, myself, Rhett, Bobby. Right. I finished in first place. Uh, I have no points remaining. I have some, luckily. So my goal right now is I just don't want to get beat by Bobby. Yeah, so you could still pass Bobby. Yes. We, good luck on that. A moral victory, yeah, which is be great. better so, than nothing. Go Villanova. Go, there yeah. you go. So yeah. good luck to you, you, Rhett, as always. <laughs> hey, one last bit of news. Liberty Football announcing a three-game series with North Carolina in the future. So some fun games ahead yeah. for Liberty. We'll talk more about that next week. As always, hit us up on social media at GameOnLU. And check out our website as well, GameOnLU.com. He's Rhett McGibbon. I'm Matt Warner. Thank you so much for watching this week. And we'll plan on seeing you right back here next time at Game On.